Hey y'all, I'm Sam and welcome back to my Southern Rustic Kitchen and welcome if you are new. I've got some delicious weeknight dinners planned for you guys this week. My daughter is also going to show you how she likes to make her favorite pasta at the moment. So let's head on into the kitchen and let's make some delicious meals. So I am starting this week out by making some steaks. My daughter wanted some steaks today, so I've got those thought out. Now this is pretty much how I make my steaks. The base is the same. The only thing that changes is the spices. So I'm just going to um, poke some holes into the steaks with a fork, add some Worcestershire sauce, some salted pepper, and whatever kind of seasoning that you and your family enjoy. And then I'm just going to cover this up with some plastic wrap. And I'm going to set this to the side for about an hour to let it marinate. While the steaks are marinating, I'm just going to go ahead and make some baked potatoes. All I do is preheat my oven to 425 and I wash the potatoes really well, spray them down with a little bit of olive oil, season them up with some salt and pepper, and I put them on a baking sheet lined with parchment, pop them in the oven for about 45 minutes to an hour take them out, cut them down the center, kind of smush them together, and then those will be ready. While the baked potatoes are baking and the steaks are marinating, I'm just going to go ahead and make my tea. If you want to know how I make my tea, I will leave the link in the description box below for you guys, but it's pretty simple. I just add a gallon sized tea bag to a pot of water, bring it up to a boil, cut it off, let it steep, add some sugar to the tea jug, pour in the hot tea, add some water, mix it up, you're good to go. Now um, I never add my hot tea to my refrigerator, I always let it cool down before I add it to the refrigerator because you will ruin all of your stuff in your refrigerator if you put a jug of hot tea in your refrigerator. So. Always remember that. All right, my steaks are ready to go on the grill pan. I just put them on there, let them cook about three minutes or so per side. You can cook them a little bit longer if you like them cooked a little bit more well done. Um, and then I added some asparagus to a pan with some butter, salt, and pepper, and I just cooked those up. Alright, 
here is my plate. I just have the grilled steaks here. These were absolutely delicious. I also have the asparagus, my baked potato. I just added some butter, sour cream, and some bacon bits to the top of that. And I have a piece of sourdough bread. I just have, you know, spread that with a little bit of butter and toasted that up on the grill pan as well. And this was dinner tonight and it was absolutely delicious. All right, so now my daughter is going to take over the camera and I tried to film this with her, but trying to film her is like trying to film a wriggle worm. It is all over the place. So just bear with me and I will try to get this done. Um, but it was so funny getting to film with her today, but I have no idea what this pasta is called. This is something that she makes when she gets off of school. Sometimes she will have it for lunch. But what you want to do is you're going to bring a pot daughter to a boil. Add some salt and add your pasta. She's using the um, thin spaghetti here. While that is cooking, you're going to add some butter to a skillet and let that melt. Once that butter has melted up, you're gonna add your garlic. And she used, I think, two cloves of garlic here. And she just let that cook for about 30 seconds. And then she also added in some red pepper flakes. She's like me, she loves everything spicy. But she added that in there and she started up added some salt and pepper. After that, she kind of mixed it up, let it cook for another 10 to 15 seconds. And then she added in a about a half of a cup of white wine. She stirred that up and she let that cook for about five to eight minutes just to reduce that wine down and cook out that alcohol. Once the white wine has reduced down and the alcohol has evaporated from the wine, she added in the juice of one lemon. She also said that sometimes she does uh, half, you know, the juice of half of the lemon. It just depends on how she's feeling that day. If she wants to use the juice of half of a lemon or a whole lemon, it just depends. She added that in there. She added a little bit more salt and pepper. She added the pasta in and kind of tossed that in with all of the sauce. And that was it. Here is my plate. Uh, my daughter had pretty much the same thing. I just added Parmesan cheese to mine, to the top of my pasta, as well as a little bit of parsley flakes. I had a side salad. Um, I just had some Parmesan cheese and a little bit of balsamic glaze on the salad with some mixed greens. And this was absolutely delicious and very light. For dinner tonight, I'm starting off with making some coleslaw. Now in the front bowl here, you will see a bowl that has some cabbage in there as well as some carrots. That is for my coleslaw. And in the bowl in the back with the remaining bit of um, cabbage, I'm going to be making some sauerkraut with that. But for the coleslaw, all I do is I just mix up some mayonnaise, some sugar, salt, pepper, and a little bit of white distilled vinegar in a bowl. Whisk that up and set that to the side so the sugar dissolves. And then I will add that to the coleslaw and kind of mix it together. And then I will cover that up with some plastic wrap and put that in the refrigerator until dinner is ready. Now how I make my sauerkraut is I just add about two tablespoons of kosher salt to my bowl of cabbage here. Mix that up really, really well. And then I just cover that up with plastic wrap and then I set that to the side so that way that salt can start drawing out the moisture and liquid from the cabbage.
starting out with dinner, I've got the coleslaw in the refrigerator and it is doing its thing and getting all nice and delicious. So I'm going to make my fry bread. If you don't know what fry bread is, it is a Native American bread. You just fry it in some oil and it's so, so good. So I've got that going here and I'm also going to be making some fish to go along with it. So the fry bread is draining on some paper towels and they're just going to hang out there and just cool down a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to cook my fish. This is whiting fillets. Um, I've already got the one side seasoned, so I'm just going to go ahead and season the other side. I'm going to brush a little bit of butter on the skin side. It's just going to help the seasoning stick. I'm going to season it up with some pepper and onion butter seasoning and let that cook about three minutes and then flip it over to the other side and let that cook another three to four minutes and then that will be good to go. All right, here is my plate. I've just got the fish here and this fish was really good, very, very light. I've also got some green beans that's just steamed with a little bit of salt and pepper. I've got the coleslaw and a piece of fry bread. And this, you guys, was a very, believe it or not, it was a very light and filling dinner. And it was so, so good. Now, it is after dinner and I've got everything cleaned up. So, I'm just going to go ahead and start on my sauerkraut. All I'm going to do is take my sterilized jars and lids and I'm going to add in my wilted cabbage. Now there's a little bit of juice like that come off of the cabbage in the bottom of the bowl. You're going to need that so I wouldn't discard that. Um, if you need a little bit more liquid you can always make a salt brine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cabbage and add it to my jar take the back um, take the end of a wooden spoon and kind of tamp it down really really well and get as much of that cabbage in that jar as I possibly can now that I've got my cabbage into both of my jars I had just enough cabbage to do a smaller jar but I've got it cram packed in there and now I'm just going to add some of that liquid that come off of that cabbage that's at the bottom of the bowl. Like I said, if you need more liquid, you can certainly make a salt brine, but you're going to want to let that completely cool down before you add that to the cabbage. So it doesn't destroy any of that good probiotics that are in the cabbage. After you get that filled up to the bottom lip of the jars, you're going to add your um, your fermentation weights and you're going to press down as much as you can. Um, if there's any excess liquid, you can just dump that out back into the bowl. Once you have your fermentation weights in the jar with the cabbage, if there are any bits of cabbage that is floating above the fermentation weight, just go ahead and discard that. You don't want that in there because if you leave it in there, it will probably mold and it will ruin the entire jar of sauerkraut. And that is not what we want. So after you get that in there and discard any bits that's floating above the fermentation weight, you're going to add the lid on top and loosely add the, um, the outer ring. You're gonna set those in a baking dish and put that in a dining room or on your counter for about a week. Wrapping up this week, I'm making some chicken wings. Now I'm not making hot wings, but the I will leave the link to my hot wing recipe in the description box below as well as some of the other recipes in this video. It's just a base recipe, but you can add whatever kind of spices to the butter um, when you're making this in place of the hot sauce if you don't want any hot sauce. 
so what I'm going to do to the chicken wings here is I'm going to spray both sides of the chicken wings with oil spray. I use olive oil spray. And then I'm just going to season these up with some salt and pepper. I'm going to put these in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes and then I'm going to flip them over and then I'm going to cook these for another 25 to 30 minutes just until everything is nice and cooked through. Once the chicken wings are completely cooked through, I'm going to add a half a stick of butter to a microwave safe dish and just melt that down. But you can absolutely put this in a saucepan and melt the butter down that way. And then I'm going to add about one to two tablespoons of this truffle parmesan and black garlic seasoning. You guys, this seasoning is so good. But I'm going to add that in there, mix that around, and brush that on both sides of the chicken and put that back in the oven for about five minutes. While the chicken wings are cooking in the oven, I'm just going to add some fries to the air fryer and cook those up and then dinner will be ready. All right, here is my plate. I just have a few of the chicken wings here and some fries to go along with it. I made my daughter some rally fries and I made RB fries for me. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Ready? You ready? Yes. Is it on? Go. Still not. That's good. That's good now. You guys get paper flakes. <laughs> 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 yeah! I have no idea. Oh, okay. Did you drop it? Yeah. yeah don't don't add too much paper flakes. <laughs> No. Last time I added too much, she's all I need a little peppery. You might die from a sneeze attack, but it's okay. <laughs> that seasoning really, really busts it. Alright, we ready. Got it. Gotta get that little ace more plop. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Ace more words. Words. <laughs> Wordly. Wordy. Are you going to pour it again? No, I'm scared. It's not going to go into flames. It's not going to. All I see is your hand. <laughs> I got a little scared. I'm sorry. Look, I can see I'm seasons in there. <laughs>